So today we're going to cover the traffic light protocol, also known as TLP. So what is it? Well, it's created in the early 2000s by the UK government and it pretty much goes over how widely we want information to be known. Um, it's evolved, as of all things, and it's become pretty formalized now. Um, you can pretty much run into the same TLP rules everywhere. Uh, can now be applied to both classified and unclassified information, uh, though classification levels still outrank uh, TLP levels um, if you're in the InfoSec community and the government. Uh, and information is still restricted by and governed by copyright rules. So our first level here is going to be TLP white. Um, as you can see here on the left side, um, this is commonly how TLP white is displayed. Um, for TLP white, information carries minimal or no foreseeable risk of misuse. Uh, this is also called the open TLP level. So commonly information shared uh, between industries, sectors, countries, things like that. Now you have TLP green. Um, information is useful for the awareness of participating parties or peers in the community or sector. Uh, you see information shared between different communities like RCISC, uh, which is the Retail Central Information Security Center. Uh, there are other type of organizations for different industries and sectors as well. Uh, Usually you're not sharing this information publicly via channels, but it can still be circulated if needed. Uh, you're not going to see this all over the news, um, but if needed, you can put it on the news. Uh, this is also called the relaxed TLP area. So now we've got TLP Amber getting a little more severe here. Information here requires support to effectively be acted upon. You've got risks to privacy, reputation, or operations of the company if shared outside of the organizations involved. Um, you're going to see information here like there are vendor issues with, um, or security issues with certain vendors. Like there's a Cisco vulnerability in the switch. Um, you're going to see Cisco probably sharing that with some of its key partners uh, like its manufacturers first. Um, recipients may only share this information with members of their own organization or clients and customers who need to know. That's the main thing here, need to know. Sources are at liberty to specify additional intended limits of sharing and these must be adhered to. Unfortunately, this is an honor system though. There's nothing really um, going around as far as punishment goes. This is also called the limited TLP stage. And finally, the most serious, TLP red. Information cannot be effectively acted upon by any additional parties or it can lead to impacts to privacy reputation or operations if misused. Uh, for example, say that Dell has a issue at the manufacturing floor. One of its um, one of its machines was infected with WannaCry ransomware. You don't want to spread that. You want that to stay with the internal incident response team and any other teams that need to be involved. Uh, this type of information is not going to be shared outside of the specific exchange, meeting, or conversation. You're going to be told verbally by this, probably pulled into a meeting. How we do it at my work is we pull it into a meeting, we do a quick rundown of what's going on, and of course at the very start of the meeting we say this is TLP red. That's our, that's our uh, notification that this is not to be shared even among the team. So I'm tier one. I'm an event analyst slash incident responder. 
If our Tier 3 gets notification of a TLP Red incident, I'm typically not told until I need to be pulled in. Um, of course, that also means there are blind spots in vision of people who aren't told. You may be asked to perform certain duties in assistance of a TLP Red situation, but you're not actually given all the details, such as open a ticket to our service provider so they can investigate these five PCs. Well, what's on them? Uh, that's TLP Red information. Just open the ticket. This is the strong or restricted TLP level. So how do you use TLP? Well, you can use it in an email. Uh, you can indicate it, or you need to indicate it in both the subject and the body of the email prior to the designated information itself. So you're not just going to put all the information in the email and then say, oh yeah, this is TLP red somewhere down at the bottom. No, you're going to put it in the subject and you're going to tell people at the very top of the email, this is TLP red. If you're not the intended target, delete this email and let the person who sent it to you know. Uh, this needs to be in capital letters. You can see here, TLP red, TLP amber, TLP green, so on. Uh, you can also use this in documents. There are plenty of executive level documents at my company that I've been privy to that actually show this at the head of the uh, document. It can be in the header or the footer. Typically you want it to be in the header. Um, and it needs to be right justified, 12 point font or greater. And there are specific RGB schemes. Uh, RGB is the red, green, blue uh, color gamut. Uh, here's the TLP red one. R255, G0, B51, and of course the backgrounds. And you have that for all of them. So for further reading on this, um, the first page, that's, that's a really awesome page. Uh, has a lot of good information. So does US CERT. Uh, there are other CERT communities in other countries as well you can get this information from, um, such as the Computer Incident Response Center in Luxembourg. Uh, that has a lot of good information as well. So let me know if you have any questions to this um, down in the comments below.